okay so we are going to cover the next topic okay hypothesis test okay so hypothesis seems to be a little bit uh, challenging for you to understand but it's a very simple concept okay if you go in depth okay and i'll go through that okay so here also some of the theoretical part which is uh, seems to be a dry subject but end of the uh, class we'll have some other interesting topic also so don't sleep okay be active okay right so pad comparison test okay so here we are we are talking about uh, some of the comparison tests what we are maintaining here pad comparison test okay the hypothesis testing okay this uh, mostly this hypothesis testing we will use in the analysis phase okay analyze phase see what we'll do here is see for example we'll take one scenario and then we'll try to create a hypothesis there okay see for example i'll take one one uh, example which everyone can understand very easily okay one courier company delivers more consistently than another company okay this is a hypothesis right what this mean i am creating one statement based on the problem okay for example i am taking one scenario from our uh, projects okay what i'm saying is i'm i'm creating a project saying that uh, the payment posting is doing every time payment posting is doing correct work compared to all other process that's my statement okay that is called my hypo hypothesis okay so what we are going to do is setting up a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis for example what i'm saying my payment posting process is always good that is my statement so now i have to create alternate statement saying that my payment posting is only problem for my process like that we will create alternate hypothesis there should be only two activity one my null hypothesis should be good or my alternate hypothesis should be good so what i'm going to do by based on my data i have to run and then analyze and then i will either select my null hypothesis or i will select my alternate hypothesis so it cannot be two cannot be same right cannot be true for example either my process payment posting process is good or it is not good that's what i need to finalize based on the data what i have so this called your null hypothesis and opposite to that is called alternate hypothesis okay value should not be mutually exclusive that's what we are we are talking about okay both cannot be the same it should be a mutually exclusive and should not be overlap also right either it should be good or bad that's called your hypothesis okay figure out the test consideration okay the, when you are doing any null hypothesis there are two important value to uh, figure it out okay one is the alpha value second one is p value okay if the p value is anything is lesser than 0.5 then you can consider that as a good hypothesis or good method to consider okay this p and alpha value once you, uh, we'll go in depth if you get the uh, Uh, mini tab okay that will be easy for you i'll try to explain with the excel okay in, in the coming classes and if you are understanding it's well and good otherwise the mini tab will be very easy to to show you the alpha and the p value okay they will give you the access for mini tab actually i lost my uh, 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 access otherwise i would have been shown you the mini tab it is not with me and mini tab is a easy tool if you put the data it will give the clear cut information okay that's what uh, all the black belt people will use okay and hypothesis test for the pad comparison the same thing we have the two tests okay one is pad comparison using t test and and the pad comparison value okay the data has been pad through the same set of subjects see there should be a set of uh, data which should be pad together then only we can use this pad comparison so what do you mean by that see for example i'll take one scenario okay see we want to take a quarterly test results for a different class what is the class new medication to reduce their blood pressure okay for example we take two set of people and we just want to understand whether the blood pressure is reducing based on the medication what we are giving to them so here is a link is their height and the or the people and the blood pressure is a pad comparison based on the new medication is a test right so there should be two data to compare it and data should be organized in pairs okay see for example a person name for example a person a and the blood pressure that should be always a paired methodology by that we can compare both okay data should be organized in the pairs a number of defects produced before and after installing the new machine see for example what we are going to do is for a, uh, we will take a sample okay we will take one for example 10 people we will take and then we will measure their blood pressure that is one pair sample the same people we will give a medication and then we will check the blood blood pressure again okay that will give a difference okay whether it's a pad what is the improvement happen or what is a, uh, a reduction in the performance happen that will give a clear cut instruction 
okay so that we are doing it and the same way i put one more example for example i am putting on new machine okay how the uh, process previously happened after installing the new machine how it is improved see for example quality they are auditing and then they are they are bringing one new process into the place see for example you are doing one six sigma project and you are trying to bring one methodology to the uh, process okay and you compare okay how it performed previously how it has happened now see for example pre billing team we introduced right before the pre billing what is the percentage of denial and after the pre billing team what is the percentage of denial we are getting or rejections you take that and then you start comparing okay that's called your pad comparison t test okay and the test see for example sometime the variance will be different and the variance number you have to take the f distribution table okay for example this will be covered in detail okay when once you go to the next level so based on this one one then if the if your number of uh, for example df2 and df1 is comparing one one then you have to take this value as your f distribution table it's similar to your uh, log log table right when we use in 10th or 12th okay the same way you have to compare and then take this value okay that one thing and then two sample tests also the same thing when the two sample test parameter mainly the f distribution table we'll take it from here okay as so i'm not going in depth on this because it's only for your knowledge and you will get that in the next uh, course okay hypothesis test for a proportion okay so what is the proportion we have to understand in the hypothesis okay we are not always dealing with the continuous data understand hypothesis testing see why the hypothesis is important okay for example if you are taking any all the data if it is a number we can go with the uh, only with the uh, statistical methodology we can complete it okay sometime it is not going to be a continuous data there will be a lot of discrete data you need to analyze so for that we are mainly using this hypothesis testing okay data should be binary such as it will be yes or no or pass or fail okay these type of data we may require the hypothesis testing to finalize it okay samples are random and tests are independent okay this is the some of the challenges in the data collection okay which we cannot come to a direct conclusion that's what we are taking the hypothesis okay so if you take the chi square okay there's a null hypothesis and then alternate hypothesis as i discussed with you what you are taking is a null hypothesis opposite to that is called alternate hypothesis either this or that you need to select you can do it by the chi square or you can do it by the anova or one way anova test these are all the some of the methods which we can do for the hypothesis test okay i know you have a lot of question on the hypothesis but it's not explained in detail in the green belt and you can go with the practical then you can understand it very clearly okay again hypothesis testing and the test for means okay so here null and alternate hypothesis what i covered right so the null hypothesis we call that as a h0 or h0 we'll call it as and the alternate hypothesis we we'll call it as a uh, h alt right there's a two way we are calculating it testing really the two goals we are going to test and we are going to see that whether it is our project is favoring the null hypothesis or a alternate hypothesis that we need to cover okay this i'll put it in the uh, in the path okay you just go on and read it see you compare both okay what's your text message says and what is the uh, ppt says you will get some understanding i am 100% sure you won't understand everything thoroughly but you have to know about it if anything they are asking in the in the qualified test you should know what is hypothesis testing okay i'm i'm moving on okay this is very important okay the confidence level and the error type okay see whatever we are discussing now taking the measurement and then taking a hypothesis all other thing there is a error also we are accepting okay whatever i am calculating there may be some error right see for example the gcr what we are calculating right say so gcr we are saying the projected gcr we know very well sometime we are not able to meet out because it there is some error in the process also so we are not we are not saying to the management saying that whatever i am calculating there may be some error but we know that right see sometime what is happening is all my charges is not billed out okay sometime we are not billing it it is on hold but we are calculating the entire charge into our gcr calculations Okay, these are all some of the error i just want to give some example that's what i'm referring that to see here if you take that there are two types of error one is type 1 error which is called alpha risk type 2 error which is called beta risk so whenever you take any of your analysis there will be a two type of error is available there okay so what do you mean by alpha risk okay see for example you are auditing your process okay you think the product is defective 
okay when it is good see for example we will take a interview process okay you you reject the uh, candidate saying that he is not good but actually he is good okay the problem is he is not able to express at that time that may be the reason he is not performing well but we are rejecting that's called your alpha risk the beta risk is different okay you may select a candidate which is not a good candidate but we are selecting okay this mainly because of the product is defective but it is not rejected we are selecting that guy so whenever you you do any of the process we may come across alpha risk or a beta risk both is possible right so if you do any alpha risk what happen you are losing the good product right for example you'll take a product okay there is a water bottle product is a defective okay but it's a good product but you are rejecting it it is going for the scrap then it's you are wasting the money and the second thing is if the product is defective and you are not rejected and it went for the marketing what will happen it will come back to you saying that there is a defect in the product then it will go for a product maintenance and all the warranty replacement everything will come because of the beta error okay, any question here alpha risk and the beta risk this is very important uh, in your life so how to avoid this risk it's based on the experience right how you are doing the process continuously that will give a heads up how to remove this kind of errors okay power and sample size see what happen when we say about the error the people tend to do take a lot of sample right see that's what we are doing when when we are doing a quality analysis everyone tend to ask them to do a 100% sample why we are doing it to avoid the error right if they do 100% error we can avoid the error that's what is happening but practically that is not feasible right see we have to take a right sample size okay not the 100% sample see to do a define a right sample size this is a formula okay moe is equal to z alpha divided by square root of n okay z is a critical value okay which is defined for your particular process and sigma is a standard deviation and n is a sample size okay this will give you the moe okay so it uh, this this particular thing will give a clear cut instruction what is the sample size you have to take to to identify your uh, population and the sample size okay the population difference understand what is the difference between our the two population is a bigger difference for example power of our test will increase so we you think that your your sample is increasing going to reduce your error it's not going to be the variability okay for example if you are measuring the two different population your variability will always be there and you have to consider your alpha level as i told you the alpha level will vary from 0.01 to 0.05 and the common value 0.05 this will define your alpha value you just know about it what is a uh, sample size how to define it you will get the detailed information later okay okay any questions so far no ji no okay anyone asking any question i have some boys oh, okay sir, fine i have one oh, clarification regarding for that uh, yeah can okay, be a little bit louder i am not able to hear it okay sir so you stated like the z is a critical value yes z is a critical value so which means uh, if it's an error it comes under the same parameter it will be goes to the critical value right correct correct see what we need to do before you take a sample size you have to finalize your critical value say for example um, we are taking a, any process right uh, for example we have i am finalizing 98 percentage is my critical value then your 98 percentage will be your z value say some process i may need 100 percent uh, value so your critical value will be 100 percent based on your critical value you have to finalize your z value there okay sir okay thank you sir okay right. okay sir so process of hypothesis testing bidadu karumari hypothesis vandute irukku namma okay see establish the hypothesis okay how we are going to create a hypothesis so as i told you null hypothesis is creating a rule or creating a comment of your process okay is that parameter of the interest are equal and there is no change or no difference see the null hypothesis is going to talk about what is existing that's all it is not going to do anything else as i told you the payment proposing team is doing a good job that is the actually available i am taking that into a null hypothesis okay, alternate is exactly opposite to that okay and the test consideration okay what we need to do is there is a select appropriate test 
statistical based on what we are trying to test okay so for example if you are creating a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis you have to select a test to prove your null hypothesis right and make sure that we are identifying the appropriate alpha value based on your test alpha value you have to identify and need to determine the sample size okay that's what we discussed last time okay sample size you have to finalize it and conduct a sampling representative samples okay the sample taking we discussed earlier right how to take the sample random sampling or stratified sampling kind of thing you have to identify which sample you are going to select and how you are going to run this particular test okay based on this test consideration we are going to do the test statistics one is the p value and the z statistics and the t statistics okay and know what type of test you are going to using and if it is a z statistics if a sample is more than 30 you are going to use z and if a sample size is less than 30 you are going to use a t t testing okay z testing or a t testing which you are going to use and as i told you the p value is important okay calculate the critical value of the p value always when we consider if a p value is point less than point 0.05 your value is good to proceed otherwise it will be a rejected one see for example result interpretation p value is lesser than your alpha value then test is significant reject our null hypothesis this is a rule as i told you right how you are going to reject your null hypothesis and select your alternate this is the this is a value when you compare your p value with alpha value when the p value is lesser than alpha you are you are going to reject your null hypothesis what is null hypothesis what is actually existing that is your null hypothesis okay if the p value is more than alpha then you fail to reject the null hypothesis that means what we are going to accept the null hypothesis so there are one or two tailed hypothesis testing okay after you do this all this plotting it will come as a one tailed <coughs> or two tailed hypothesis testing this is a two tailed hypothesis testing and then critical value method comparing the two our test statistics and the, our critical value based on that you have to come back with your critical value method as i told you the p value it should be greater than uh, alpha value then we will reject or accept okay so the in this slide there are two points one we are doing a hypothesis testing null hypothesis is what is existing is a null hypothesis alternate is opposite to that okay when you will reject your null hypothesis when your alpha value is lesser than sorry your p value is lesser than alpha then you have to reject okay keep that alone and coming to test statistics there is a two type of test one is z test and the t test z if a sample is more than 30 and your t is greater less than 30 these are all the very important point to remember from here okay all other things are you just go through the document and you have some idea on it okay okay um, here one sample test for means okay there are there are, as i discuss here okay we are discussing about z and the t okay that's what we are trying to explain here see one sample t test and the z test sample size is greater than 30 we'll go for z test okay population variation is unknown our sample size is less than 30 we'll go for a t test and this this is a flow chart we had given when you have to select the z and the t okay you just go through that it's very simple one the formulas and all you need not remember it okay if you go to mini tab it will automatically throw the value uh, you just understand what is that and how we are going to use it that will be sufficient for this okay uh, see we discuss about two sample t test the same way two sample also the same thing okay if you supply or the mean is coming here then you can put it here and then you can go through that okay this also i am not going to go in depth okay it will be too boring and uh, say ex trying to explain in the online class that would be a challenge you just go through this and then if if any clarification on it we will discuss most probably this all will not covered will not come in your uh, green green belt okay any question so far so far what we covered is you should get the basic understanding of the hypothesis first one and difference between null and alternate okay and the types of error is important and uh, when you are doing a hypothesis testing so how we are going to select your sample size okay that formula is very important and uh, here the test consideration z test and the t test is important and when you will reject your null hypothesis okay these are all the very critical uh, from this particular topic okay so we'll move to the next one so far any question guys talayum bulla kaalum bulliya illa puriya illa konjam odu diabetes sim toolu onnu koopidu toolu koopidiya hello everyone is here 
ஒர்க்ஸ்ஃபுல் <laughs> but we won't go in depth in this in this aspects that's only challenge but we have to learn right if for example you moved you decided to move out of healthcare and then going to some other process and you say that i already got my six sigma black belt or a green belt obviously they will ask these kind of questions right that that that's what we are trying to cover in depth okay right so multi variation analysis so here what we are trying to do is this is a variation with from the multiple factors okay multiple input factor this is very important okay so i can say that this you can implement into your your charge value to identify how your output is varying based on your input see for example i'll tell you a scenario so we we covered a scenario called y is equal to f of x right based on the charge your uh, your collection is going to be decided okay that's what we finalized y is equal to f of x see in the f of x is there any variation is available that's what we are discussing here okay f of x is what charge the charge is not the same right the charge will vary by pair charge will vary by the cpt code charge will vary by your reference doctor for example i am taking uh, talking about the crl or cnd okay based on the reference uh, referring doctor your your charges may differ is a collectible or non collectible that will differ based on your input see for example i have multiple inputs okay how i am try to understand okay we are trying to understand how they impact the outcome of the process by using this multiple multiple input factor okay and the pattern of variation multi vary chart okay is is very useful by showing this pattern of the variation see what what this we are going to cover okay see for example you take a scenario okay i I'll, i'll take crl as an example okay this month i am getting a sample from bcbs and signa and yoc i am taking only these three sample and i am comparing with my output for example i know the bcbs is not paying because of my referring doctor is variable and that is my impacting factor then i have to put a multi vary chart to identify for example in which place for example i am taking my uh, charge okay bcbs of uh, texas if i get lot of claim from bcbs of texas my outcome will in, my output to our the collection is increasing right that is my parameter right then i have to understand how many is coming from my own state okay where i can improve my revenue like that you have to come to a conclusion for that the multi vary chart will be very helpful okay identify the relationship and the gain insight where the variation is coming from see you know very well your variation is coming from your charges right and you understand which charge is going to give you the better results okay so that, that's what we are trying to incorporate that into multi variable chart and you identify the source of variation so here our source of variation is very simple right it is it is by payer or by cpt code or by for example if you take aba by session timings okay for example we are billing all the session after crossing the meu limit right the charges will be more are we going to collect no that that's it depends on the variability of our input okay that's what we are trying to cover here and reducing the variation the input variation need to be reduced see for example if i know that bcbs of uh, i'll take anyone ohio okay i'm not going to collect at all then we have to go back to the uh, to our client and then say that don't accept any sample from ohio bcbs because we are not going to make any that's that's a reducing the variation type here okay and steps in creating the sample plan how we are going to create a sample plan determine the scope what is your scope i have to improve my collection and set out a time frame what is your time frame i will uh, do this analysis for 3 months or i will go back to my old data for one year and then i will give my accurate data data to the collection or to my uh, client that we have to finalize it okay look at some of the initial sample to make sure that you get accurate information so here the sample collection is not our problem because we already have our historical data from there you easily you can come up with it. okay so what is the variation in the six sigma okay uh, the the positional variation so what is positional variation typically variation occurs between the same part see for example i have five parts in, in my process okay 
If the process is, for example, one, two, three, four, five, instead of that, I have three, two, one. What is the position? Because of the position change, what is the variation is going to cause? That's called positional variation. And then cyclic variation, part to part variation. For example, charge entry is my first process. From the charge entry, it is going to a it is going to the uh, claim retransmission. Okay, that's a part to part variation. How it is differing between multiple parts. Okay, temporal uh, variation, shift to shift variation. For example, the same process is done by two different shift. Okay, the, for example, I have um, uh, charges are huge charges I'm having. Okay, I'm not able to complete. We'll take one batch. For example, payment posting, one shift people, for example, morning shift people is coming back and then creating one batch. They're not able to complete that particular thing. And then the, that is completed by the second shift. What is the variation is happening based on the shift to shift people, people variance. Okay, that's a three type. One is position variation, and the one is cycle variation. Third one is temporal variation. These are all the three types of variations. And correlation and the correlation coefficient. This is what we covered uh, two weeks before. So I told you, right, 